It's five and we are live. You know what to do. It's time to look at and listen to Break On Through. With me, your host, Jeffrey K. Clayton, the long-haired weirdo. Come on in the house. Hey, Brian. <clears throat> I've got quite a bit to cover today. So how's everybody been so far since I, since I was uh, with you last, last Tuesday? Been a week now. Hey, Byron. Tommy. There's my main, main Captain Catastrophe all the way from the great country of Belgium. He's with us here live today. <clears throat> As I said, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started because I got a lot. Talk. Have y'all seen these? That's a big ass sticker, isn't it? There's Dave Prino. He's he's here live. He ain't got one of these. I know you're saying, "Well, damn, Jack, what do you expect me to put on a damn backwards end?" And no, because I have to do the damn camera like this so that I can see. And if I can't see, I don't. I, you know, you may be looking. The camera may be focused on my wrestling figures all day, and you just see like a sticker coming around like this. Hey, you see this sticker here, y'all? So, see, I got to be able to see. So, it goes backward. But when I send you one of these, it won't be backwards. I can 97% guarantee that the sticker you order will not be backwards. How about that? <laughs> I introduced a new patch. Man, why don't you put some damn stickers or some damn t-shirts out of If it had been a sticker or a t-shirt, damn, why, but, why, hey, Jeff, why wouldn't you got some patches for us there, Hoss? Oh, uh, well, I got patches. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And y'all know about this. And I'm going to tell y'all, man, the pink, the pink vinyl getting low it's not danger low yet but there were only a hundred of these and this is what uh, people are buying the most of I'll, I will have black vinyl on the road with us in a few weeks here or two weeks it will wake up though oh shit man I'm tired working class man we're in inventory at work oh we're having to actually go in and work. Ridiculous. <clears throat> Let me scratch off stuff I'm talking about so I don't talk about it all over again. I guess by all um Oh there's Bill. Hey uh why don't y'all post some more uh, pictures about um Rule Breakers Ball? Man, I wish we could have been there. We're going to try to make it next year. But um, this this should be the Break On Through Halloween show. But, man, I'm going to tell you all what, man. I'm about halloween out. And we're still a week away. I just, I don't get excited about it anymore, man. I, 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 probably, I probably said this exact same thing last year. Maybe when the little fella in there, you know, can start actually understanding what's going on with it, maybe it'll be uh, exciting again. But I mean, I watch, I watch the same kind of movies all the time. It ain't like I just start watching horror movies at Halloween. But um, whatever y'all decide to do for Halloween, I hope you have a good time. I hope you. Uh, 
<clears throat> I hope you enjoy it. I hope your little ones enjoy it. I hope whoever's going with you doing whatever you do enjoys it. <clears throat> I got a few plugs to do right here. My my main main Andrew Drew Toth of Juggernaut Graphics. He has a wonderful T-shirt available for sale now. You gotta, you gotta go to him on Facebook and find out how to get it because I didn't see any kind of link or nothing. But it's a, an A cab, A cab shirt. Now I know what that usually means. But Drew dares to hold the opposing viewpoint on ACAB, which is the one I prefer. So check it out. Look at it. Comes in black and red. I guess you may be looking for something to do this weekend because of Halloween. Well, man, I got two things that I can tell you about right now that I think would be a good thing for you to do. If you happen to be around the Morganton, North Carolina area, or you want to make a road trip to Morganton on Saturday, October 29th, in, down, in the downtown area of Morganton, they are holding the Brown Mountain Lights Festival. At 4 p.m., you can see Malcolm Tent performing live at the Brown Mountain Lights Festival. And after you've seen Malcolm and your mind is blown and you, you're probably tired and want to go home, if you stay later, you can see Joe Buck yourself <clears throat> but I'm going to tell y'all something though if, if you go to the Brown Mountain Life, don't even go don't even talk about it don't, don't even call somebody up right now and talk about it until you have familiarized yourself with the song The Brown Mountain Lights by Tommy Fail. Just Tommy Fail. The Brown Mountain Light. YouTube. <clears throat> See, this is modern times. You don't have to do anything. Just. There it is. That Saturday, October 29th, downtown Morganton, North Carolina, Brown Mountain Lights Festival. You can see live Malcolm Tent and Joe Buck yourself. I'm sure there's a lot of other stuff going on. The Brown Mountain Lights is quite a um, phenomenon up around the North Carolina mountains. But if you happen to be in the Charlotte or surrounding areas on that same night, Saturday, October 29th, at the Visual Light Theater, <clears throat> their second time out, the Alice Cooper tribute band Love It to Death, which features anti-scene member Sir Barry Hannibal on drums, along with our close pals Dave Winecoop, Steve Wenzel, from, who are also in the Jeff Clayton Dimension, <clears throat> Andy Krause from a wonderful little rockin' teenage combo called the AMFMs. And Kelsey Ward, the daughter of Mad Brother Ward, is the lead vocalist. And man, they put on quite the spectacle. And uh, the last time they played, I, I don't even remember the date, but it was pretty incredible, man. He's just, you're talking about a band of people that love this, this music. And they really, 
reproduce it very well. <clears throat> I'll tell you what, um, if y'all want to ask me some questions, not long 45 minute essay questions, but if you want to ask some questions, I'm pretty close to the phone. I may be able to see them. So ask away and uh, see if we can catch them. Cause um, I've been scratched through my list, man. And, I'm, and I've just about scratched out everything. I got my top 10 to go. And uh, <clears throat> while you guys figure out a question to ask, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, first I'm going to ask you something. Did y'all enjoy last week with Trip McNeil? We were talking about the 90s music scene in Charlotte, North Carolina. All right, I'm seeing some thumbs. I'm assuming you did. You did enjoy it. Well, <clears throat> I opened the show by saying, look, back then, the measuring stick you had to use about promoting the show was Trip or Bill Vazel. From Bloody Mary. Trip was from Seducer. Eventually, anti scene. Those guys promoted a show like nothing you've ever seen. And, and, and I'm going to tell you a current example <clears throat> that I see happening right now. My main man from Mobile, Alabama. Dennis Highland of Future Hate and Jack Hammer Music. I'm going to tell you something. That mofo is promoting our show in Mobile like we've got a $7 million guarantee and he's responsible for every dime of it. I'm going to tell you what, man. There are nincompoops out there will tell you the old way of putting up a flyer. It don't have, it just ain't, it, it don't do no more, man. All you gotta do is make a post on Facebook. Bam. No, you know what? That's not true. It's not true. That's not even something we can argue about and have an opinion. It's just not true. Flyers still work. They're not as effective as they were when it was the only way to get the word out, but they're still effective. Well, Dennis has merged the best of both worlds, old ways, new days. They had a nice flyer printed up, and he went around to local businesses asking if they could, you know, put the event flyer in their windows or on their bulletin boards. And the ones who have complied, which it looks, so far looks like it's been a hell of a bunch of them, well, Dennis takes a picture of them either holding it up or putting it up in their window, and then you you tag the business. Look, these guys, this business, you know, business uh, <clears throat> Jim's Crawfish Cupcake Factory, right? You You check in on Facebook. Jim's Crawfish Cupcakes. Well, then, you know, it's like he get hit now, now he's getting some traffic. And now a bunch of other people are seeing the picture of the flyer being put up on in the window, but they're seeing it on social media. It's a post. It's like it's not the same flyer over and over and over and over 400 times to where you just get numb seeing it and you don't see the date, you don't see the name. You just scroll right past it because you've seen it so many times. Now, I know y'all go, damn, Jim Clayton, you tuning in to break on through and you're sitting there wagging a finger at us telling us how to promote. And, uh, I, I, I'm not pointing just at you. I'm talking about me, too. Man, I look, I'm the worst about it. Oh, I got a flyer. Bam, I'll post it here. I'll post it there. I'll post it here. Uh, okay, it's been four days. I'll post it. I'm the worst. I'm the worst at it. But Dennis has really inspired me. 
And, I, and, and you know what? I mean, if you're here, apparently you're an anti-scene fan of, to some degree. But even if you don't give a shit about anti-scene, just, what, just look at what he's doing. And maybe apply that to your own thing. Well, damn, Jeff Clayton, I don't live in Mobile. Everybody, everybody in my town ain't nice. I will find out the ones that are. And when they do you the favor of displaying your flyer, do them the favor of giving them a check-in or a tag or a mention or, you know, something to steer some traffic their way. Didn't cost you any, all it costs you is some thumb, some damn thumb exercising. That's all it costs you. Hey. <clears throat> hey, man, there wasn't nobody in the show. What goddamn why? I put a damn flyer up on Facebook like six months ago. And, uh, that's all you did? Well, yeah! It's Facebook! Everybody's on Facebook! I'm, 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 man, I, I, I may have said this on, on Break On Through before, but, you know, we're going on two, over two years now, so I don't remember. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell y'all, for you that are with me today, I'm going to tell y'all this. And for you checking in later, I'm just not talking live, you know, to exclusively to the live folks, but if you check in with me later. There was a member in this band one time <clears throat> when we were trying the method of delegating. Because in most bands, there's one guy who's the flyer guy. We tried to delegate to spread some of the responsibility so that everybody participated. I gave this former band member a stack of flyers. It wasn't what we considered like a... I hate to say not an important shit. They're all important, you know, when you play in front of people. But it didn't... It wasn't one of the big events that you know, relied on the advertising. And, man, I'm going to tell you what. <clears throat> I didn't see no flyers anywhere. Of course, I had a stack with me. No one wasn't going to probably see them anywhere, so I went ahead and put the damn things up. And when I said something to the guy, you know what his response was? Man, I hung some up in my house. Man, there's a lot of motherfuckers come through here. Man, you know what? <laughs> I could do a month's worth of shows just on the shit that has been said to me over the past 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be in the top top 50 <laughs> a lot of motherfuckers come through here now <laughs> oh god mm. yeah well <clears throat> woo my main main George South dropped off this for me today now last week I showed you see I got the Chase variant Blue jacket, George South figure. And I know y'all were doing, damn, you yeah, you got damn George South figure. Go to georgesouth.com. Or better yet, if you're in the area, go see George. He, man, he wrestles every weekend. Randall Munson says, tell us more. <laughs> man, I'll tell you, I, 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 you know what, I'm, I, I was talking to my main man, Bobby G, on the phone today. And I told him about this, man. I, I said, man, see, <clears throat> Joe used to get in these phases. 
Now, I'm not going to talk ill of him, but <laughs> sometimes he get in these phases where um, he want to become Mr. Purist. Man, I, I don't think we should even do merch. We shouldn't do merchandise because uh, merchandise costs money. Hey, man, when we do these next two shows, we're going to use that, what we get, and pay the t-shirt man off, okay? What? Man, I don't think we should do merchandise. I think it should just be about the music. And I said to him, yeah, man, we can do that. We can do that. And at the end of the 10 or 15 day trip, when you got your hand out, wanting your cut, and it happens to be like eight percent of what you're normally accustomed to to have it in your hand at the end of one of those trips. Don't be crying to me. I never heard... It should just be about the music. I never heard that again. George South also gave me one of these. It's an idea that he had for David Crockett, the Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Man, these, these little M&Ms, and who knows how old these things are, man. They, they got to be pretty, pretty old. But they say Nature Boy, Crockett Promotions, Crockett Wrestling, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. They say, but it's Merry Christmas from David, but... George wrote a note to me and said hey, he didn't think David really liked the idea that much. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, George. And I am pleased to have this in my museum. George has given me some wonderful pieces to display in here. I mean, if I could ever get this place in real good shape, I could, I could, I could have people come in and look at it course for a nominal fee all right today's top 10 this this idea comes from my main main mark deal down in san marcos slash san antonio tejas he uh he, he came up with this top 10 and i thought it was a good idea and I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. I had to research some of this because I knew the style that I liked, but I didn't know the name behind it. I don't know. Well, damn, Jack Clayton, you, you know everything. I don't know everything. But I'm going to give you my top ten visual artist. And when I tell you this, I'm talking about... Um, the stuff I looked at growing up that inspired me one way or another, whether it inspired me to draw or not, is not really the issue. I mean, cause, but I, I think you can get, I think you can get inspiration from art. I think you can get inspiration from music. And when I say inspiration, I don't mean to do more art or more music. It can inspire you to, man, I get, I, look, I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I get a lot of personal messages coming from people telling me how our music really got them through some tough times. And you know what, man? That kind of stuff means way more than, oh, man, that sounds like the, the damn uh, Ace of Spades out, man. That's good as hell. You know, well, I mean, that's good too. But, see, that's that's inspiration. But I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to lay off that for a minute. I'm going to go to my favorite visual artists. I had to look up some of these. Like, 
Man, I, I used to love, I, and and I was not the comic book fan that a lot of you guys are, man. I, I like, Some of you can really go back and give years and dates and storylines and stuff, but man, I, I was like the casual. Com I mean, I, like, I had a bunch of comics. I loved the horror comics. I loved monster comics, but I also loved Spider-Man. And this is the 70s. I mean, I, I've told y'all before, I had that issue, like, well, I don't know if it was mine or my brother's. What we both had that issue where uh, the Green Goblin. It was the issue after the Green Goblin killed Gwen Stacy, and the one where the Green Goblin died. Famous cover, worth a lot of bread now. I don't have it anymore. But uh, um, and I tried to look up the artist that was drawn around this. I mean, I love that comic style, the thick. Black lines, the dot patterns, the bold colors. Man, I, I do not care for that comic style where it looks airbrushed. And, you know, like the lights and, and all. The I, I, don't, I don't care for that. I mean, I know a lot of you do, and that's fine. It's just not what turns you know, flips my switch. But I looked at, uh, I guess, I'm guessing the guy that was doing it around this time was a guy named Sal... Busima, 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 Busima. I like that guy's drawing, man. It, it's like you make so some of you making correct me later on this, but um, that's number ten. Number um, number nine and eight. I'm going to give to you as a one-two punch because these guys' work was very similar. The medium they did it on was identical. And it's hard for me sometimes to tell them apart, but uh, Bob Peake and Robert Tannenbaum, who did a bunch of those 70s and probably 60s and probably early 80s movie posters. Now, you know, we go around and around about movie posters. You know, I love me some old 70s movie posters. Cause they, they, and I talked about this, but matter of fact, uh, today, the audio thread I was on a podcast uh, last last week with Madman Pondo um, and his uh, where he talks about horror films and stuff I, I put the link for it on the anti-scene page if you look under this uh, you know a couple of posts down you'll see it and you can listen to it they say it's going to be on YouTube in a week or so and so you can watch it but we talked about and we brought up the thing about movie posters again, how, man, the poster is supposed to make you want to see it. It's not supposed to be a vanity thing for the star that's in it. A gigantic close-up of their face. You know, who cares? That don't make me want to see it, man. Look at the look at the movie poster of Battle for the Planet of the Apes. I'm going to tell you something. That movie poster is way better than the movie, and I love that. Y'all know I love that movie. But uh, these guys were the masters of doing that very thing. Tommy says he always loved the old Vampirella comics. I, I'm gonna get around to that. Cause you know that old Warren comic stuff. I love it. Now, this next guy, he was just a couple years away and we would have been contemporaries, but I was able to, to, um, uh, Befriend him a little bit before he passed away. Uh, his name is Chas Ballon. He used to work for, I guess he did work for Fangoria. He also did a lot of artwork for, a ma I think, Deep Red Magazine. I think that may have been his magazine. But his artwork in these things were incredible. Matter of fact, he is the guy that I hired. I commissioned him to do the cover of the single, Walking Dead. The original piece hangs right up there um, in the Break On Through studio. And um, he's, done, he, he's done a lot of incredible stuff, but it was all within the context of those magazines. I think he did Gore, Gore Shriek. I don't know. I wish Adam uh, Neal was on here. He could straighten me up and see. I'm, I kind of did this on the fly today, so... And, um, so yeah, Chas Ballon. 
Oh, there's Eric. Now, Eric knows. Eric knows about Chaz. Was Chaz the one who did Gore Shriek? Was he part of that? I mean, you got to tell me something because I can't remember. <clears throat> one of my favorites of the fine art artist. I like all these guys. Man, I like I like I like Rembrandt. I like Picasso. I like all this. Stuff. So, you know, some of the stuff they have, I, I like. Some of I really appreciate. Some of it I don't like at all. But one guy who is in that group of the masters. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty consistent being great was Salvador Dali. How much do I like Salvador Dali? Look up here. I got that poster off the street in Germany. Man, back in, I don't know when. The year is probably on it. If I care, if I don't want to look at it backwards. But let me see if I can show you all the Walking Dead art. Uh, I don't know if I, I, I can't tell if I'm showing you it, but it's up there. Hopefully you see it. All right, here we are back live. Not only did I love Dolly's artwork, man, his interviews were pretty incredible too. <laughs> that whole uh, walking contradiction, which I consider myself to be a lot, he was, uh, he was the king. <laughs> Matt, now I've never been to that Dolly Museum in St. Pete, man. I would love to go there. I did see an actual Dolly exhibit in um, Atlanta a few years back, and that was pretty incredible. Now, one, one of the thing about the artist, man, I really, when I like the guys, right, the draw or do the art, I really pay attention to how they draw women. And this next guy, I mean, I don't even know what number I'm on. Let me see. One, two, is it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. I'm on number 5. I'm halfway through the list right now. To me, this guy draws women. I mean, it may be a little exaggerated, but it ain't the way he worked all the time. But the artist Bill Ward, not the drummer, the former drummer of Black Sabbath, not him. This is a guy named Bill Ward. He did a lot of stuff. I mean, I guess he was doing stuff in the uh, 50s and 60s, but he did a lot in the 70s and 80s too, especially in the girly magazines. But his... The, like one of his uh, trademark things was making uh, satin and nylon and uh, that kind of material look just like it was like real, like it was shimmering. And that's a, a trait of his artwork that I really like. There's tons of collections. Matter of fact, Malcolm Tent has an original Bill Ward piece in his museum. I can't help but think one day it's going to end up right here in the Break On Through Studios. What do I know, though? Number four. Basil Gogos. Damn, they're playing up while you didn't like the Misfit. I, I don't care for the Misfit. But, man, Basil Gogos, famous monsters, covers, perfection. I've got one. I've got a book on his art. I mean, it's just like full page pictures of his art without the magazine oh. titles and type. Which I like them with the titles and type. Man, I love magazine covers, like old magazine covers. I got. I've shown y'all. I showed y'all them boxes. I got. Man, that's nothing but sixties and seventies and some eighties magazines. Man, I love the whole of the whole format. I got some in the mail from my main man, Jamie McClendon. The other day, man, I just, I just love this stuff. Well, that's not 70s, but it's 8, so I'm all about it. But great stuff. I love it. Um, so Basil Gogos is number 4. 
Now, I'm having a, a real hard time with uh, 3, 2, and 1. <laughs> Randy Reeves is growing out of the misfits of the right of manhood. <laughs> oh, boy, you probably upset some people there. Oh, well, what are you going to do? But, uh, man, th these guys are probably... On an even kit, like it's one, two, three, man. It's like one, two, and three. Like there. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. But I really love the art. And, and this might sound, you might, oh, damn, that's damn cliche as hell there, Jim. I don't care. Frank Frazetta. I don't care if you are looking at Molly Hatchet covers or if you're looking at Conan comic books or. Whatever. Man, some of that stuff is just mind-boggling amazing. Amazing. I think Dust had a Frazetta album cover. I talked to Mark Rainey about us having a Frazetta album cover one day. Uh, I don't know if he's ready to make, take that plunge. <laughs> we'll see. Number two. Now, if there was ever a guy whose artwork, made, I looked at it and said, man, I would love to be able to do that kind of thing. And I, I still look at his artwork and say, I would still, I would love to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, I loved underground comic books. The black and whites, I loved them. And man, this guy, I don't think he's ever done anything. He may have covered some subject matter I didn't like, but the artwork, always top-notch. Robert Crumb, one of my favorites. I got several books of his collections, and uh, I love that stuff. Love it. Okay, my number one. I, judging from the way this is gone, I have a feeling there's some of you out there who pretty much guess what number one is. Boris Vallejo. Am I even saying his last name correctly? He just signed his... He signed his paintings, Boris. Love it. He did some of the Tales of the Zombie. I love Boris Vallejo. I mean, I, that's why I say him and Frazetta and uh, R. Crumb for me are just like... I mean, I'm going to tell you what. I mean, these are the guys I grew up looking at and, uh, you know, staring at these drawings and paintings and stuff, you know, for hours just trying to figure stuff out and and all, but you, you talk about uh, people that are around now now. It's like, and these are, a lot of these are people I know, okay? But in modern times, man, some really great artists out there, man. Uh, from right here in Charlotte, Rodney Raines, uh, Frank Kozik, I loved his style. Uh, the guy that gave me the idea. Mark Deal, fantastic artist. Ryan Almighty, the original blood artist. Often imitated, never duplicated. Eric Perfect. Jamie Vida, who has done a ton of work for us. I had hoped uh, Jamie Vita would be uh, to anti-scene what Derek Riggs is, is to Iron Maiden. But Jamie has uh, gone through some things in his life. And, man, I, all, I, all I hope is, is the man is content. I hope he's happy. Um, I haven't heard from him in years. I reached out a few times and got something back. But, uh, um. 
But I think the guy that may is going to be taking that spot. He's going to be our Derek Riggs, of fellow I've known for a long time, My, named Mike Harper. You will, uh, you probably, well, dang, we ain't seen nothing. For, yeah, you have you, the shrunken heads of us on the, that's going to be on the back of the hoodie that's uh, getting produced. I should have in a week or so. That's his, uh, that wasn't the first piece he did for. He did the front and back cover for Great Disasters. I know y'all are doing, well, yeah, when the hell is that coming out? Yeah, good question. But uh, we're working on it. We're just about done with it completely. Matter of fact, we have one piece we have to add, and we're done. It's just a matter of getting it all together. You know, you know, how, you know how putting out independent records is? But, um, but yeah, that's what I got for you. Visual artist. And if you don't know some of these guys, man, you know, if you, if you catch it on a replay and, or if you, you remember some of the names or you need to write them down, man, go check out some of their stuff, man. I, I think, I think most of you on here will like, will like most of it, um, Hell, if y'all want to turn me on to some people, you know, uh, private message me some names to look at. I, I ain't just the one that does the turning on around here. I like to get turned on to stuff, too, you know? I don't mean like 700 bands send me a burnt CD of your band. I, I, but, uh, you know what I mean. But, uh, hell. Man, it's coming. It's coming soon. The maiden voyage of the ultra lineup of anti-scene. We start practicing on Halloween evening. How appropriate is that? The maiden voyage. November 3rd. Reggie's. In Wilmington, North Carolina, with Street Clones and Bastard Brigade. November 4th, Jack Rabbits in Jacksonville, Florida. All you Florida folks that planned on having a two-day weekend with us, man, come on up and spend that, that Friday night with us. Because the next night, I probably don't even have to say it because Dennis Highlands made sure every mofo on the internet knows that on November 5th, we will be in Mobile, Alabama with future hate and the power strip Burlesque show. And you know what? That's it. That's all. That's the only chances you will get to see anti scene in 2023. Because then we're. Oh, no. You say, what are y'all taking a break? Taking a break? No, 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 no. You can't park the death train in the garage and not tend to it. You can't just leave it there. It'll get all froze up. Rusty. Hard to start back up. Now nah, the death train keeps rolling. It keeps rolling. And believe me. You folks will be the beneficiaries. So don't forget, this weekend, Saturday, Malcolm Tent, Joe Book Yourself, Brown Mountain Lights Festival in Morganton, Love It to Death, Alice Cooper Tribute, Visual Light Theater in Charlotte, my main main, Coleman Coleman, saying Christmas show, no Christmas show this year, Coleman. Sorry, I know it's been, it, it has become kind of a tradition, but man, we, we had to choose. We had to choose, brother. We must choose. 
So we chose to lay it light, to lay light on the Charlotte area until the end of 23 when we will play the 40th anniversary show. And believe me, all through 2023, we will be dropping details, hints. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And as soon as we secure the hall of where it's going to be, man, we're going to start advertising right at the beginning of 2023. So don't you worry about that now. As always, thank you for joining me. I enjoy sitting here talking to you. And apparently a, a good number of y'all enjoy sitting here listening to me gab. And I appreciate you. And you go out there and you have a good rest of your week. Have a great weekend. Oh, and I failed to mention, next week, Break on Through will be on Wednesday night. Now, you know I'm going to have an ad made that tells you that, but next week will be on Wednesday because i got to practice with the boys. Monday and Tuesday. I'll take a break on Wednesday. They'll tighten up what they got going on. Thursday, we'll be in Wilmington, and we'll be live. Dwayne, you get back to work. Man, i got to... I got to get up, get some dinner, go to bed soon, and get up before the sun comes up to go to work myself. So, uh, cheers to the working class. See you next week.